All right, boys. So I believe we found a treatment or a cure for the stutters on Radeon graphics cards here. My 0.1% were actually pretty high compared to the 130s, 120s I was getting before. Hey guys, it's Cornell from Sets Quality, and today we are going to fix your stutters. Uh, even if you're on NVIDIA, we have tips for that too. And if you want a quick FPS boost by an expert, just like we do for the CDL, or for the professional Warzone players, you can go to SenseQuality.com and we got you covered there. If you need a PC that's tuned and everything, looking buttery, 300 FPS, 400 FPS, out the door, TunePC.com and we got you too. I'm going to do this. If you stay until the end, I'm going to give a bonus tip at the end just to increase the performance of your game in general. You guys remember the times where you could have just hopped on your PS3 on GTA 5 and it could have ran it perfectly smooth without it crashing or stuttering or doing anything like that? I miss those days. Now we have thousands of dollars worth of PCs that can't even run Warzone or Cyberpunk. So today we are going to be fixing stutter. We're going to completely fix it like for Warzone, especially with AMD cards. Now, if you have an NVIDIA and you're still watching this video, stay tuned because we do have latency reducing tactics that we're going to introduce after so if you want to skip to that you can so let's get into it all right boys so for today you're going to need two programs you're going to need msi afterburner and you're also going to need uh intelligent standby list so the thing is you don't really need msi afterburner but i would prefer that because it's more consistent than using the Radeon software itself. The first thing that we're gonna do, boys, is we're gonna go to Radeon software. And you know how uh, we're max overclockers, we want the highest performance possible, we want this, this, and that, making sure it's running at the full speeds. Boys, with stutters, we can't do that. With stutters, you actually gotta do the opposite. So we're actually going to underclock our GPU. So we're going to take 100 megahertz off the core clock. Then we're going to test it out, minusing 25 from each test to see where our GPU is comfortable with without the stutters. And I've had a few people try this and it completely erased their stutters. And you still get pretty good frames. I think this card, the 6900 XT, still beats the 3090 while it's underclocked. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go to performance in your Radeon software, then you're gonna go to tuning then under tuning you're going to see a couple of options here all you have to do is go to gpu tuning we don't want to do too much we just want to do just enough to get rid of the stutters here that's what we're concerned about first so before you touch anything else you are going to turn on the advanced control right here that'll allow you to control your core clock you need to remember this number my number is 2584 that means that my gpu came out the box with this high of a core clock. What we have to do is minus 100 from this number and then we test and test and test. The stutters don't go away, you minus 25. Go back in a game, see how it is. Stutters don't go away, you minus another 25. You keep doing that and that is going to actually fix your stutters. I know it sounds crazy guys, don't ask me. Um, so basically, I'm going to put this at 2484. If you want to keep your GPU cool as well, I usually just do the fan tuning because I'm paranoid. So you could just push your fans up a little bit here just to make sure they're running a little high. So it's not getting too hot and you're just going to apply there. It's really important that you apply. Then you're going to test out Warzone, see how it is. Um, and if you still feel any kind of stutters when you get into an actual game, you are going to roll it back. So let's say I went into Warzone, it's stuttering, it's, it's being weird. You can actually minus this by 25. So it was like two, two, four, eight, four. So it's going to be two, four, let's say 50. Apply it, test again, see how it works. And once you hit that spot where you're not getting any stutters, that is where you should leave your maximum frequency. And you can then touch other stuff like your minimum frequencies. You could probably put it to 100 under. So through 350, that way you keep your boost clock. But if you get the stutters again, just turn that off. That's perfectly fine. We just want a smooth game right now. So now what I'm gonna show you is in game settings so we are in warzone right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to options 
graphics and you could change this to what you want so if like you're 1440p and stuff like that you change it to 1440p i was testing to see if there's any difference between 1080p and 1440p with the stutters it actually happens more on 1440p so the more you put load on your graphics card is actually the more that this happens now a weird setting that actually decreases the stutters that you can do is put your texture streaming quality to normal instead of low for some reason normal with the vram it allow i guess it allows more vram to be used uh because low limits you to four gigabits and then you want to disable on demand texture streaming and you could copy all the rest of my settings here you want to make sure cache spun uh sun shadow and cache sun shadow is enabled and that should be good right there so as long as that's good you are perfectly fine if you want to take the extra mile what you can do is you can actually come to custom frame rate here you can put gameplay custom uh, frame rate to so your monitor's refresh rate. So you can just put 240 and you can leave these at 60 and that's going to be perfectly fine. It's going to be a little bit smoother with that. Um, so yeah, so that is another way to decrease um, like the stutters or increase your 0.1% FPS averages in general. Now, when I say 0.1% fps averages what i mean by that guys is basically you get average fps in your game so you'll see from like this benchmark here that i am going to be testing average fps one percent zero point one percent and what that allows me to do here is it allows me uh to see how smooth the game is running so if you see my benchmarks right here it's, it's a little hard to see i'll probably zoom in here if you see my benchmarks right here the most important number probably here is probably the 0.1 percent of course the averages are pretty good but this is what the stutters are on like Warzone right now for the AMD cards. And this is actually happening to Nvidia too. It's just not as noticeable, uh, but Nvidia's are also dipping pretty low with the new uh, graphics driver updates. Basically with AMD cards on normal, it actually increases your 0.1%. So you definitely want to have this on normal here. This is not opinion, guys. This is factual statements here that increases your smoothness of your game. So I would definitely put that on normal and that should be perfectly fine. Now, another thing that you could do is intelligent standby list cleaner. So the ISCL. So you're going to come in here. You're going to download. I'm going to have the link below. Uh, you're just going to start it up and it's just going to run in the background here. Now, it has two files in there. So, yep. So, it's right here. So, you have to open the readme. The readme is extremely important. And you have to copy this. You have to open command prompt. You got to run as an administrator and you press enter there. And that is actually going to help you out here uh, with running it every time your pc starts up so then you're going to copy the second one you're going to put it down here you're going to press enter and that's going to help you as well so that's going to be perfectly fine and then you got to reboot your pc here now i already did all that so that should be perfectly fine for me uh but when you're setting this up what you're basically going to do is you're going to enable this uh custom timer resolution you're going to make sure that this is on 0 0.50 um and then you should see 0 0.499 or 0 0.5 here uh which means that it's working perfectly fine and then uh you'll see over here it is basically just cleaning your memory in general um this isn't like too crazy on like high-end systems but if you have like a really really low-end system where like you don't have a lot of memory or like you're running out of resources and stuff this will make a great impact to your system here and then you would go to this part this part is the tricky part let's say you have a total memory of 32,000. you're basically gonna divide that number by two so if i have 32,000, i'm going to put 16,000 here basically i will start iscl minimize i will launch icl on logon and i'll just put this on a thousand and press start there and then it should run in the background you have nothing to worry about it's going to do everything for you and that's going to make sure your memory is clean so you're not going to get any extra lag from like something pulling resources out of your search index or something like that from windows because you know how windows is guys for amd cards what you would have to do is you have to go to amd drivers amd driver support and personally this is for me i've done a lot of testing on this uh, the driver that's getting like uh, really low stutters is either the October driver for AMD, October 25th, this driver 21.10.2, or it's going to be the newest driver here, which is the 22.2.3. I would try the October driver for first, j guys, just because it's running really smooth for me, it, like really improved my... Um, 
0.1% in general. Uh, and if it doesn't work out for you, just try the newest one, and that one's pretty good too. It's not that big of a difference. So guys, I hope that helped fix your stutters. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video, and let me know if it worked down in the comments there. Let me know if you have any other tips that we can try uh, just to make sure the game runs better for everybody else. So that's going to be awesome. And here is your bonus video. So a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between full screen borderless and full screen? Isn't full screen borderless better just because you could go to different windows, you could alt tab faster, you don't have to go black screen when you alt tab. I'm going to teach you why exclusive full screen is always, always better here. So to break it down in simple steps, Windows has built in VSync. Even if you shut VSync off in your settings, VSync will still be enabled through Desktop Windows Manager. And I'm gonna prove that to you in a program right here. So VSync basically means is it's adding a little bit more delay, but your game is gonna look perfectly smooth. And I'm gonna show you what lines here. So let's open this up. So as you can see on the Elgato, you see straight lines. This is full screen borderless. And you're not seeing any kind of screen tearing at all because it is syncing it. It's adding a little extra latency and it's just going to look smooth. Now, let me switch it to full screen. And you're about to see what I mean here when it goes to full screen. It is not activating VSync. And as you can see on the Elgato on your side, it is not smooth at all because it has no VSync here. So it's screen tearing and it's doing all that stuff, which is actually a good thing if you're, uh, well, screen tearing is never a good thing, but it's actually a good thing that you're getting lower latency here. And that's what you want. That's what you feel in game. So this is why you have to use full screen because you get less latency from full screen versus using full screen borderless where vsync's enabled by default which a lot of people don't realize so always guys if you're on a dual pc setup and you want to get the best frames and everything always go full screen 